Well, good morning. And happy Thanksgiving. It is just a glorious day to be able to give thanks, to be able to worship our God. And, um, you know, I'm so thankful to be here with you all. I'm going to invite you to stand and shake a hand to share a name and uh, let someone know that you are glad to be worshiping alongside of them. Uh, for those of you who are online, we are so glad to be worshiping alongside of you too. Uh, we pray that God would just bless you and your home this evening uh, and today and that you would just find a place uh, to, to know that God is in the midst, even in your home. And so uh, uh, go ahead and greet people in the chat as well. Well, we begin today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, be in this place. Fill our hearts and our lives with your worship. Allow us to, to use this time to be molded and shaped by you into who you desire for us to be. We pray this in your mighty and precious name. Amen. You all may be seated as we hear the word of God being proclaimed. Our first reading uh, comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. And I think as I was picking these uh, verses, I must have been hungry because this is all about, um, it's all about this feast, this feast that you and I will experience. And I know that, you know, most of us here, we're going to go and have some incredible food later on. The turkey is going to be great. But, but this food, this feast is the feast where 
um, we will be with God forever. And that's the one that we truly wait on. So hear these words. This is coming from uh, the prophet Isaiah, and uh, he is speaking on behalf of God. He says, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a, f- a rich food full of marrow and aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. And he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth. He will take away that from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We've waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We've waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes to us from the, the first book of Peter, book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, where Peter writes, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of respect for Jesus and his words of life, we stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is found in Luke today, Luke chapter 17. And it reads, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. They won't say, look, here it is or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is already in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the son of man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look there or look here, do not go or follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things to be rejected by this generation. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue on singing our message hymn, Praise to the Lord.
may be seated. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, on this Thanksgiving Day, I am thankful for a lot of different things. I'm thankful for a God that loves me. I'm thankful for a wife that puts up with me. I'm thankful for the relative peace that we live in. I'm thankful for people that God has given me to serve and to love. I'm thankful for, for you all and how you take care of Carly and I. And I'm thankful because God has blessed us a lot. And so I'm going to invite you just... 10 seconds, right? Turn to someone next to you and tell them what you are thankful for today. All right, what do we got? Anybody want to share? Freedom, family, Love that. Praise and worship. Amen. Being able to pray. Amen. Well, God has blessed us a lot. And on this Thanksgiving Day, I have got some news for you. And I don't know how this news is going to affect you. This news may bring about fear in some people. And in other people, this news may push them and, and, uh, um, and encourage them to strive to do the best that they can do. This news is something that the Holy Spirit is surely going to work on your heart with. And I don't know how he's going to work in your heart with it, but I know that he is going to work. And the news is this, that Jesus is coming back soon. Our King, who sits on his heavenly throne, is coming back soon. And he says that there will be a day when he comes back to judge both the living and the dead. 1 Peter 4 writes this, that the end of the world is coming soon. And I don't know about you, but I hear that word soon. And I think that this is imminent. This is happening real quickly. This could be like today, or it could be tomorrow, maybe the day after. And it does not, it does not go unnoticed that Jesus said this 2,000 years ago. But we trust that God's word and God's timing is different than our timing. His word remains true. And while we may have to wait a long time, it may do us some good to start thinking about this in terms of the immediacy of Jesus coming back. Jesus is coming back soon. And because we know this, because we know that Jesus is coming back soon, it changes everything. We're going to open up our, our uh, Bibles. We're going to 1 Peter 4. I'm going to invite you to, to take a pew Bible out. I will have a translation up here. It's going to be different than your translation. And this is just because as I was reading um, the New Living Translation, I found it easier for me to understand. So you can follow along in your Bible. You can follow along on the screens. Um, but we're just going to go verse by verse through 1 Peter. So 1 Peter starts out like this. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had, and you must be ready to suffer too. For if you've suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your life chasing your own desires but you will be anxious to do the will of God. Peter talks about how Christ has been broken and that if we're going to be Christian, if we're going to be Christ-like, we should be ready to suffer too. We should be ready for when people slander us. We should be ready when people try to kill us. We shouldn't be surprised when persecution comes our way. Instead, our life 
and our desire and our will should become more and more aligned with God's will. And this is going to look completely different from how the world looks around us. Verse three, you've had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and their lust, their feasting and their drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. See, the way that the world looks and the way that the world works is different than how we look and how we work. See, while we grow in matching our lives up with God's will, the way of the world is to move more and more towards their own will, towards their own way. The world does what it wants. The people in this world, their their immorality and their lust and their feasting and their drunkenness and their lack of self-control and idolatry, the things that make them feel good and special, that's the thing that they wanted. That was the way of sin back in Peter's day. And as we look at the world around us, I don't, know that much has changed. Isn't it true that we face a world that is consumed by immorality? It is held together by systems that feed into our lusts. It seeks to to please our every desire for everything at every time. We want what we want and we want it now. We've got Burger King saying it to us to to have it our way, right? We've got the Backstreet Boys singing it to us. In fact, it's begun to be seen as immoral to withhold from our desires. Something's wrong with you if you don't go after what you want. The world around us says that if we lust after someone who isn't our spouse, if we lust after someone no matter what gender or preference or marital status, as long as it's not really hurting anyone, then we should be able to fulfill that longing. The world today is built on consumerism and this this idea that, that we should fulfill our longings, that if we're not comfortable, if we're not filled with the best foods or the best drinks at all times, then something is wrong. This world worships everything that props itself up as God, gaining their identity from work and from success and from relationship status. This world is chasing after everything except for the one true God and the one way of life that he calls us to. And because of this, the people of God should stick out like a sore thumb. Peter continues on, says, of course, Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and negative things as they do. So they slander you. See, the world attacks things that are different from them, which we should be. But remember that they will have to face God. And God stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the living. And the dead, and the dead. That is why the good news is preached to those who are now dead, so that although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God and the Spirit. Verse seven. The end of the world is coming soon. And now listen, this shouldn't be surprising to us that the end of the world is coming. We see it all around us. Sinfulness and selfishness is everywhere. Everyone's trying to go their own way. Everyone's trying to do their own thing. There is conflict all over the world. There is news of school shootings and attacks on innocent people. And all of these things have become commonplace. The world around us, the world around us is falling apart, isn't it? And as the world breaks, We as Christians, we as Jesus followers could respond in a few different ways. We could act like the ancient monks did in the past, kind of run away from the culture and try and remain as pure and as 
as holy as we possibly can. We can try and close ourselves off from the world and try and just focus on us. And we see this happening all around us. There are churches who shy away from interacting with the community and the world around them. They become afraid to interact with people of certain communities because they're worried that it might impact the church in a certain way. Certainly many communities because or have, have reacted against the world falling apart by staying as far away from it as they could. We could run away from this broken world. But many people also react to the world falling apart by trying to argue against it. Trying to tell them every single thing that they're doing wrong. Coming up with reason after reason after reason about why we are right and the world around us is wrong. And I think of those churches who, who stand outside of stadiums saying God hates this or God hates that. And, and they, end up like, they end up like the musicians on the Titanic making a whole bunch of noise, but not doing anybody any good. They're arguing all the time, and, and people see that this world is falling apart, and they, they try to get away from it, or they try to argue against it, or they end up just succumbing to it. They end up looking at the world falling apart, and they think, well, might as well join in. And they lose their uniqueness. They lose their witness. But see, we as the church must be different than the world around us. But we try, and we stay if, as far away from it as we can. We try and argue against it. We, we succumb to it. But Peter, when he's faced with the world ending, gives a different thought. He says, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. And most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal and a place to stay. His answer to the world ending is not running away. It's not trying to debate and argue and figure out who was right and who was wrong. He says, we as the world, we got to do, or we as the church got to do something different. He says, we're called to enter into this broken world and bring prayer. We're called to enter into this broken world and bring love for each other. We're called to enter into this broken world and bring hospitality. And you know, this, this past month, we've been talking about how, how we are to be a community that is all in for Jesus that we are to be a community that is all in for, for what God is doing in this place. And I think what Jesus is calling us into here and now is that we are to be a community that is all in for this broken world. That we are called to be all in, to, to use the, the gifts that God has given us as stewards of God's grace. That we're to be a people who is who is so deeply in love with this community that we are calling for, for God to work and to rule and to reign, that we're praying daily for it, that we're asking that his kingdom would come, that his will would be done here in this place, that we would be a, a people that, that asks others, what can I be praying for? How can I be praying for you? And then we actually do it. Our prayer, and I think what God is calling us into, is that we would be a people that love so deeply and so consistently that people can't help but take notice. That we would be a, a church and a people who, who practices the gift of hospitality. And we, we talk about this in youth group all the time. Hospitality. Hospitality is making the person who feels like an outsider feel like an insider and turning the hearts of the insiders towards the outsiders. It's making someone feel welcome. This, this word for hospitality in the Greek is two Greek words just smushed together. It's the, it's the word for friend 
and the word for stranger put together. And the idea of hospitality is that we are making the stranger a friend, that we are taking the, the unknown people and making them known and making them feel known. God has called us to be a people that welcomes those who need a, a meal or a place to stay and welcomes them into our home and into our hearts. God's people don't react to the end of the world by running away. And we certainly don't react to the end of the world by arguing against it or even becoming like it. God's people react to the end of the world by diving in, by going into the community and looking different, by being good stewards of the grace that God has given us, that we don't own the grace God has given us, but we are, we are handing it out all over the place to be good stewards of it. Peter finishes up. He says, God has given you each a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So do you have the, the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and the energy that God supplies. And then everything you do will bring glory to God through Christ Jesus. And all glory and power is his forever and ever. Amen. Church, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back soon. And as the world falls apart around us, God has given us the ability to serve one another. And whatever you are good at, you can use. You can use to pray and to love and to welcome. And so are you good at talking? I know some of you are. Use that talking to share the love of Jesus with other people. Are some of you good at praying? I know there are a few of you in this room that are just absolute prayer warriors. Use that gift God has given you to pray for the people around you, to call them out by name and to say, God, I pray that you would work in this person and that person. Use that gift. Do you have a gift of helping others? I know some of you do. Use that gift to, to bring people a, a piece of pumpkin pie later on today. Use that gift to, to help others love and be loved and feel loved by Jesus. The end of the world is coming soon, Peter says. And while it has been 2,000 years, we live in the immediacy of soon in our hearts. There is not time to wait. This world is falling apart around us. This world needs prayer and love and hospitality. This world needs the gifts that God has placed in you. This world needs Jesus and you're the way that they're going to find that. So Jesus, give us the courage. Give us the immediacy to love and to pray and to welcome. Give us the courage to love on your behalf today. We pray this in your mighty and precious name. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue on in our time of worship uh, through the receiving of our tithes and offerings.
we're going to do something a little bit different for prayer. We are going to say the Lord's Prayer, but what we're going to do is we're just going to take it one slide at a time. Okay, so we're going to say the slide, and we're going to stop. We're not going to move on to the next one. We're just going to wait for a few seconds and just kind of ponder that and pray on that, and then we'll move on to the next one. So I know for me it's going to be difficult because you just you kind of just keep going. You know, you start and you, you keep going, but we're going to try and just kind of pause through it, okay? So Almighty God, we lift this time up to you, and we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, you are our Father. You are the one who sits on your throne in heaven. You are holy. And we pray that your name would be made holy in this place. We pray together, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that your kingdom would come in this place perfectly. We pray that your will would be made on this earth, that the things that are going on would, would be brought about by your will, that people would experience your love, and your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we know that your will is done perfectly in heaven, but we pray here in this place that our community, that our neighbors, would know your will. They would know that you are loving them and caring for them. We pray together. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, provide. There are so many things that we need to keep going on in this life, and we pray that you would provide. We pray that you would provide healing for those who are sick, we pray that you would provide hope for those who are grieving. We pray that you would provide uh, food and, and financial means for those who are struggling. Provide for us so that we might love on this world and, and show your provision to those who are in need around us. We pray together and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, we are sinful. We live in a sinful world. And we pray that you would take away our sin. We pray that you would take our brokenness and our sin and our shame and put it on your shoulders, Lord. Help us to experience your forgiveness and your grace. And help us to share that forgiveness and that grace with those around us. Lord, I pray for those who are having hard hearts. For broken relationships, I pray that you would renew them. Restore them. We pray together. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, this world is full of temptation, and you are our mighty warrior. Salvation comes from no one else other than you. So Lord, help us to look to you for salvation. Help us to look to you for freedom from addiction, from conflict, from shame, from loneliness. Help us to look to you for freedom. Deliver us, Lord. We pray together. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Lord, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We trust in you, and we look forward to your coming, and we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come into this place. 
We need you in this place. In your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue on with our uh, next hymn. And we'll close with singing, uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Amen. Hey, I don't know if you all have had a chance to meet uh, Mary Beth, but Mary Beth is going to be playing the organ uh, a couple times a month with us, and we are so thankful uh, to have her. She played uh, last weekend and today and this next weekend, so she's going to be she's going to be here a lot. And I just want to invite you: go ahead and and wave at her, like talk to her, make sure that she feels welcome. And um, yeah. Mary Beth, we are glad to have you here. And um, I would invite you to put your arms around the people next to you and to receive this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his unending peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.